but I still record on the stream so for those who miss it can check on the stream but for the Camtasia I already record only from now on okay so I'm going to start sharing my screen uh, the notes are already posted online okay the notes are already posted online the only thing I did not post online was the SPSS exercise why because we have to go to the website uh, together okay okay there is a query there I will check the query chat your final exam when will be the date okay that question only only Azimatun can answer uh, basically the instruction from the government uh, that we are supposed to have no face-to-face -face class until the end of the year but we know already after August the the all these things will be over already and students will still come to university starting from the September intake for the new intake so it's still, still uh, uh, going to be face to face for the new intake for you all uh, whether is online or offline okay right now when uh, when Aziz asked me uh, do you want to change my, your exam to become assessment or exam I said I told her I already, I already got uh, assessment. I already got assessment. So what is assessment? I got the four assignment, and I got the computer based exam. So for the final exam, it most probably will be online if we are not allowed to see each other face to face. Okay, if we are not allowed to, but the format of the exam is still the same. The format of the exam is still the same. Okay. So, what does you mean by same? As promised earlier, there are going to be 30 OBA and 2 SA. But the problem now, if we are doing this in online exam, the exam question will be different for everyone. Okay. the exam question will be different from everyone so uh, how it will be done so everybody will get a different URL to take the exam okay saya ulang balik dalam bahasa Melayu kalau exam ni adalah exam online maka exam tu akan macam computer based exam kita dalam computer based exam kita bagi data set berbeza dalam final exam anda akan dapat soalan yang sama tetapi dalam soalan itu data setnya berbeza jadi jawapannya semua adalah berbeza jadi apabila jawapannya berbeza maka anda tidak boleh salin jawapan kawan how do we achieve that soalan yang berbeza tiap-tiap orang akan log in pakai ID dia dan bila dia log in pakai ID dia dia akan dibawa kepada website yang berbeza jadi dia tak boleh nak gunakan whatsapp ke apa untuk tanya kawan dia jawapan sebab semua orang dapat soalan lain-lain ok itu sebab kalau exam online pun uh, masih lagi dalam bentuk uh, dataset berbeza 
May Yuan tanya, can we just convert to kind of continuous event? Ours is already continuous access point earlier. So we cannot change anymore I, because our problem now, our problem now, we already started with uh, the normal format, which is we got the four minute test and one computer based exam. I cannot, the minute, the as a four assignment we know already. Semua orang score. So the only one that can differentiate you all adalah computer based exam. Nanti the one that makes or break you adalah hanya satu result itu computer based exam. Kalau seorang tak ada SPSS, dia seorang gagal, dia gagal sebab tak ada SPSS. So it is not going to be fair. So uh, that's why we have to have the exam. Okay. But as I said, it's now lah. The exam, it's uh, you. You have to understand. I cannot give you more assignment because I got another exam paper, which is totally uh, an assignment. I show you what is the assignment. You tengok the assignment you put apa buat. Okay, ini assignment, ada tiga assignment untuk uh, group yang lagi satu. So, this one is this analysis. So, this analysis. Okay. Require them to do uh, SPSS analysis. And they have to do it and send it to me. Okay, so... It, and it is not that easy. So you can see this. So these are the assignment for the. Okay. Ini satu. Ada tiga assignment. Okay. So assignment for statistic. Will be tough. Okay, this is one. This is number two. I will take a password there, yeah. <laughs> password ASSG dua. Password ASSG dua. Okay, password ASSG dua. So you can see here, uh, these are all the analysis. So when they click the analysis, click here. When they click there, okay. And this is assignment. As you can see, everyone get different assignment. So we, you all can copy. Okay, and we are asking them to do analysis. So I give if I give you all this the the uh, data set to analyze, you all guarantee die one. Okay, so let's look at the other uh, the final assignment. So the final assignment given to the students, lagi tough. Okay, what's the password? Password is. COVID-19, okay. Password is COVID-19. Okay, click this one. Password COVID-19. Okay. So you see, not that easy. So, uh, this one has an analysis of your exam questions. So we do look for fit statistics. Okay. We look for uh, the plot, whatever. So if I give you assignment, chances are you all cannot answer. So better to stay with the exam, then I can stick with the, the same exam question. Okay. And the exam question will be done. Uh, online and it will be different for everybody 
because you all will log in based on your metric number Haris tanya soalan essay soalan essay macam janji tu air lah satu chi square satu t test dia juga jawab secara uh, online akan ada uh, tempat untuk type but I tell you lah one thing uh, I will warn you uh, sebab markah tu adalah markah based on uh, laluan cara kerja so you cannot use excel or spss to generate the answers because we require the jalan cara kerja ok don't worry lah uh, just that the only different my online exam will be everybody will get their own metric number to click and when they click to the metric number they get to their own question ok so what will happen nanti ada satu page ok ada satu page dekat page tu ada nombor metrik klik nombor metrik dia akan forward ke online question dan uh, soalan berbeza ikut nombor metrik ok so that one uh, that is why we are going to do like that ok alright so let's go and start the lecture So please take note lecture adalah uh, on chi square. Okay, kasih PDF. Eh, kasih PDF. Kok so many PDF ya? Kasih ke dua seri. Alright, teman. Okay, let's go down there. Kasih kau. Okay, as promised, for the final exam, there are two essays. One essay is sky square that is soalan number satu. The other, uh, is, the other essay is T-test. So, this is the exam for the final exam for the essay. So, basically, for the, uh, the, the qualitative exam, sorry, for the qualitative data, we have Uh, three of the possible tests one is chi square or chi square v expression or fisher's exact test when to use chi square when to use the expression when to use fisher's exact test if the sample size is large no expected value of less than 5 chi square if the sample size is large but you have expected value of less than 5 you use the expression Okay. If you have a small sample size, you use Fisher's exact test. But for Yates and Fisher, it is only possible for 
qualitative dichotomous data. Okay, means two two by two table. If one does not matter, can be two by two, can be three by two. For you all for the exam is just two by two. Okay. So for the hierarchy, usually some people say hierarchy, some say hierarchy. Okay. For the hierarchy, usually we want to use the the Pearson chi square. Pearson chi square not valid, then you go for Yates. Yates not valid, then you go for Fisher's exact test. So we're going to cover with the first one, the Pearson chi square. Okay, for the Pearson chi square. Uh, who is this calculation? So this calculation is the guy who came up with the goodness of fit test. Okay, why he call it uh, chi? Because it is based on the Greek letter chi. Okay, so since the test we have like the square of a chi, so the name is chi square. So, uh, here the row, here the column. Row is the data in in rows. Then in column, we have the 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 outcome in columns. Okay. So, what is the real, the role of the chi square test? You want to see whether the two variables are related to one another. Is that there, whether there is any association? How do we know there is any association? If the frequency of cases found in the various categories are different by the risk factor, then there is association between the risk factor and the outcome. Okay, for example, are males more likely to be smokers than females? Or is the proportion of males that smoke the same as the proportion of females? Okay, so this one are more likely to be smokers so uh, males are higher level of uh, rate of smokers than females proportion is it the same or is it not different okay or you can ask in this way is there a relationship between gender and smoking behavior okay. so in this example there are two categorical, categorical variables that are involved gender male and female, smoker, yes or no, in this example. So there are some assumptions that you have to fulfill for chi-square. It should be random samples, they are independent observations, they cannot be counted twice. And the lowest expected frequency in any cell should be 5 or more. Okay, so I already mentioned that, qualitative data, sample size larger than 20, no cell has expected value of less than 5. So we have this kind of table, male and female, yes and no. Okay, yeah. is the risk factor male and female? The outcome, yes or no. So when you have this kind of data, A, A is the rate of the disease among males. So is the rate of smokers among males. C, if you look at the percentage, it is the rate of the disease among the non-exposed. So it's like this. So A, B, C, D. So when you are doing the comparison, you're comparing A and C. The rate of the disease among the exposed against the rate of the disease among the non-exposed. So to compare the, the chi-square, you have to have the value of the observed O and you have to have the value of expected E. Okay. So this one, if you're doing the study, this is the value of the observed. And now you have to calculate the value of the expected. If you have table for 2 by 2, this is the formula that you use to calculate the 2 by 2. Okay. This one are all we recovered earlier under the null hypothesis testing. 
Okay, so here's the example. So you have here on the left side, male, female, disease, non-disease. So left side is the risk factor, male, female, at the top is the outcome, disease, non-disease. So to get the uh, expected table, to get the expected table, this is the expected table. Okay. It is what we call ango ango geling geling. So ango for A ango 96. Okay. Geling 53. Then you ango balik 200. So 96 times 53 divided by 200. Same for this uh, cell, the B cell. The B cell you ango 104. You geling 53. So 104 times 53 divided by 200. Same applies for this. Ango 96. Geling 147. Then again divide by 200. Ango 104. Geling 147. Then divide by 200. So that is how you get the expected value. So after you get the expected value. Now we are going to test for the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis says no difference between your observed value against the expected outcome. So here you expect <coughs> no difference of worm infestation between male and female. So if there is no difference, if there is no difference, the rate of the disease and uh, the rate of the disease among the exposed and the rate of the disease among the exposed should be the same. So I repeat, the, uh, if it is uh, expected value, you expect that there is no difference. So when you expect no, no difference, Therefore, the rate for cell A and cell C are no different. Rate, eh? rate is this value divided by total. So, you can see here, this is the expected value. This is the table for expected value. So, this is the 25.44 divided by 53, you get 48%. 70.56 divided by 147 you get 48%. So table expected value is the value if there is no difference of the disease rate among the exposed and non-exposed. So the rate is the same at 48%. So you run the analysis. You run the analysis. Observe minus expected squared. Divide by expected. So observe minus expected squared divide by expected and you do it for all four cells you got four cells here one two three four you do it for the all four cells so what do you get you get the total of chi square 1.303 so the critical value for chi square is 3.84 the, the critical value for Chi-square is 3.84 for degree of freedom 1. So what does it mean? If these values are different, if these values are different, then the sum of the chi-square should be larger than 3.84. Here you can see the sum is only 1.303. Because it is only 1.303, therefore the difference is not significant. The difference is not significant. So how do we check? So you can see here, this is the table, table A3. You can check your table. Okay, sorry. It is a table on the second page. It is not A1, it is not A3, it is a table 3. It is a table on the second page of the formula. You look at degree of freedom 1. So you can see here degree of freedom 1. You get the value of 1.38. So 1.30. So 1.30 is here 
between 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 Bet between 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 So basically the p value is larger than 0 0.25. So p value is larger than 0 0.25. So since it is larger than 0 0.25, therefore the null hypothesis is not rejected. So conclusion, there is no significant difference of work infestation rate between male and female. There is no association between the risk factor and the outcome. So, to make life easier for you during exam, take the critical value of 3.84 for degree of freedom 1 and 5.99 for the degree, uh, degree of freedom of 2. Okay, so that is the chi square. However, chi square got problems of validity. Chi square got problems of validity. So for contingency tables larger than two, uh, two by two, you have to make sure that expected value are not less than five. Okay, expected value is not less than 5 and none of them are less than 1. Okay, chi-square is valid if less than 20% of the expected value are less than 5. Then none of the values are less than 1. So if you get a lot of expected value less than 5, you have to try merging the small cells with small values to overcome this problem. So here's an example. Uh, and this one is what you do in your exercise. You have underweight, normal, and overweight, and then you have stress and not stress. So you can see here, this one cell got problem. Why got problem? When you calculate expected value, it become three point five. So three point five is less than five. So three point five is less than five because of that. We have 1 out of 6, which is less than 5. 1 out of 6, it is 16.67%. So, 16% is less than 20%. So, this chi-square is still valid. This chi-square is still valid. So, that is the end of the first part. The end of the first part is chi-square. The next part of the lecture is Yates correction. For Yates correction, if your sample size are small, you end up with uh, expected value of less than 5 in table which is 2 by 2. If you have this kind of situation, you use Yates correction. So example given is uh, table 2 by 2, sample size larger than 40 but one of the expected cells have an expected value of less than 5. So when you get that kind of problem, you use this formula. Observe minus expected, absolute minus 0 0.5 squared. Okay, then you divide by the expected value. So the only difference is this. The chi value, whatever difference that you get, you correct by using minus 0 0.5. Okay. I'm not going to cover about yes correction because you are going to do it yourself inside the practical. So we are going to let you learn by discussing among yourself and running the analysis uh, inside the practical. So that is yes correction.
okay so uh, we covered uh, to be frank with you all today is the day with the most topic eh? so chi square covered so what else we're going to cover yes i'm going to learn your yes belajar sendiri okay uh then uh we're going to have cut fisher Okay, then we go to Fisher. Uh, I'm going to cover Fisher of this. Then we are going to have Magnima. Okay. So, petang. Petang kita ada empat lagi. Wilcoxon. Rangsam. Wilcoxon sign rank we are also going to have Kruska Wallis we are also going to have Spearman A lot of the pick to cover. Uh, okay. So by right, I'm supposed to uh, cover so on how to do SPSS. So SPSS for chi square. My, okay. Any question for chi square and yes correction? If not, I'm going to go and proceed uh, with Fisher at minima. After that, we have a break. Okay. Okay, this one is the history of Fisher exact test. I'm not going to cover so much. Uh, you all can read yourself. Uh, basically, uh, from this exercise, they came up with this table. Okay, they came up with the table. And she accurately detected which four cups where tea was poured into milk and which four cups milk was poured into tea okay so she guessed it correctly so uh, the question was what was the probability and they there is a formula to calculate the probability uh i'm not it's covered elsewhere online you can have a look at that calculation it came out in the exam last year i had good time with it Okay, so official exact test, you got a table of 2 by 2. A table of 2 by 2. But the sample size is quite small, less than 20 or sample size less than 40 and one of the cells has expected value of less than 5. Okay. So you got this uh, formula where all the tables 
uh, calculated by taking the the tip okay you go you see here is the a b c d then you have all the other values this is a plus c this is b plus d this is a plus b this is b c plus d okay and that one all become outside the totals are on the on the the, the totals on the outside are now all at the top those inside the core cells are in, at the bottom and also the total number okay you have to calculate so that until one of the cells become zero so therefore that the remark does not make sense until you saw this table so please take note this is the original table 8 3 11 11 so for the 8 3 11 11 the answer for the probability is 0 0.142 so then you have to calculate the extreme table so yeah you got uh, some more extreme tables and you have to do that until the value become zero so if you remember back this one was three so this is the smallest value of the four cells 8 11 3 and 11 so this one becomes smaller how they become smaller from the three you minus one so from the three you minus one you get the value of two but since the outside cells cannot change, you have to change the inside for the, the four cells. Okay, so since this one become two, from three become two, the, uh, this one from eight become nine. This one from eleven become ten. This one from eleven become twelve. So they make the changes. Okay, then you repeat, then you calculate the p-value for this using the formula for uh, Fisher exact test. So now the two become one. The two become one. You have to adjust all the other table. The nine become ten. The ten become nine. The twelve become thirteen. So that the outside one can maintain the same value. You get the p-value for this. The p-value for this 0 0.00668. Now, you do the final table. Why final? Now, finally, they become 0. So, you put 0 there. Then, you adjust the other values. From 10 become 11. From 9 become 8. From 13 become 14. You adjust. The rest are the same. And you calculate the p-value. You get 0 0.00039. So based on this, the total of the p-value is p1 plus p2 plus p3 plus p4. p1, p2, p3, p4. So what is the total? 0 0.19247. 0 0.19247. So from that 0 0.19247, you times 2 to make a two-tail test, it becomes 0 0.385. Since 0 0.385 is larger than 0 0.05, null hypothesis is not rejected. Therefore, there is no association between occupation and underweight. So, we run the analysis. We run the analysis. Okay. You get the same answer, 0 0.193, but here they don't put the 0 0.385, okay? Uh, but some expenses got the value uh, 0 0.385 here. Alright, <laughs> that is how you do Fisher exact test. Last time I used to give this for exam, uh, student all fail. So now we no longer give this for exam. Uh, as I say, but we give it only as OBA. Okay. Okay. And the last one is Magnima. Before we take a break. Ada soalan. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, pangka. Oops. 
Apakah soalan dia? Jangan ni. Oh. Soalan paling best. Itu factorial. Itu adalah factorial. Okey, apa tu factorial? Kalau dua factorial sama dengan 2 kali 1. Sama dengan 2. Kalau 3 factorial sama dengan 3 kali 2 kali 1. Sama dengan 6. Okey, saya akan tunjuk ni dekat kalkulator. Uh, saya akan tunjuk dekat kalkulator. Okey. Nampak ni? Ni factorial. Okey. Saya tunjukkan balik. Satu factorial. Satu. Dua factorial. Dua. Tiga factorial. Enam. Empat factorial. Dua puluh empat. Tunggu dia bagi jawapan. Okay. So that is factorial. So ini masa form 4 dulu. Form 4, form 5 you all belajar. Doktor, kalkulator saya tak ada factorial. Ada. Okay, ada. Okay, saya tunjukkan saya off screen ni. Saya tunjuk muka saya. Okay, dekat sini, dalam kalkulator ni, factorial dia, you kena tekan dia punya butang, shift. Okay, dekat atas butang logic, tak tahu nampak tak. Okay, this button. Okay, so contohnya, 2 shift factorial. Okay, 2 shift factorial. Nampak tu? Sama dengan 2. Okey. Sama dengan 2. Tukar 4. 4. Shift factorial. Okey. Sama dengan 24. So, shift factorial sama dengan 24. Okey. Uh, you all kena belajar sikit pakai kalkulator lah. <laughs> Okay, so that is why it is not really menarik pada pelajar untuk exam. Okay. Okay. Okay, last one, uh, make Nima, then you can take a break. Saya pun tak ada mood nak ngajar ni. Kalau tak pasal ada kelas dengan you all ni, I dah balik kampung lah. Alright, Tengku Anas dah jelas. Okay, sekejap eh. Okay, saya nak buka main lima eh. Saya nak buka main lima. Mana main ni mana ni?
Pak Din ni pun satu lah. Kalau dia bagi kita balik last week kan best. Ada kat 3 hari. Isnin tu public holiday. Okay. Ini dia bagi balik this weekend. Saya ada kelas lah tu. Okay. Sekejap eh. Stuff. Okay, so let's start with the Cari durian Melaka tak ada durian Yang ada durian dekat belah perak Saya kalau balik sahabat berenang Bolehlah pergi ke kampung gajah cik durian Tapi ni sebab balik Melaka uh, Tak ada cik durian lah Ah, sedih Melaka tak ada durian ni yeah. okay. Kau tak boleh Kalau kat rombau tu ada durian Boleh kat cari Tapi Bagi tanah Rombau di durian Time sama okay, Saya nak make sure Saya punya screen keluar So saya share screen Desktop Okay, this is uh, why I'm teaching this. This is one of the exam question for uh, for the final exam. It is under OBA. It is under OBA. Okay. So, siapa, apakah Magnima ni? Uh, it is named after Queen Magnima. He introduced the test in 1947. Uh, whether the pronunciation of Q-U-I-N-N and Q-U-E-E-N sama atau beza? Pada saya sama je. Queen. Queen. Sama je. So, Magnima. So, Queen McNima ni punya test Dia macam Petty test Dalam Petty test, in Petty test We compare before and after So, we got uh, A study on knowledge You measure the score of the knowledge Before and after So, for that, we do Petty test But sometimes We had, we don't have uh, the score We only have the category are you fat or not? Yes or no? So after intervention, are you fat or not? Yes or no? So for categorical data, you use magnima. For categorical data, you use magnima. So what kind of category? You must be dichotomous variables. Okay. So here we have a situation before and after intensive course on statistics. So they measure the attitude before and after. So before, 28 got good attitude towards statistics. 72, 172 got poor. After the intervention, 42 got good attitude. 158 got poor attitude towards statistics. If we look at the numbers by itself, 42 and 28, wow, better already. But when you look at the details, that is when you see something not right. 
out of the 28 people who at, who who was okay before 20 maintained to be okay but it became worse dalam senang bahasa Melayu dia sebelum kuliah 28 orang okey pandai statistik lepas habis kuliah 20 orang kekal pandai yang 8 orang tu jadi bodoh okey yang 8 orang jadi bodoh so something wrong something not right lah okey for those who were, who do not do well in the first place after the intervention 22 become better have better attitude towards statistics Okay, 150 maintain they do not care about do not care about statistics. Okay, so if you can have if you have this kind of data, what test to use? You have to use magnima test. For magnima test, we don't care about the concordant pair. What is the meaning of the word concordant? Before and after same. So concordant before and after same that one is the a and the d a starting positive ending also positive d starting negative ending also negative okay so let's do the other way around okay for the magnima, we don't care about the concordant pair. We care about the discordant pair. The discordant pair is this one. Started positive, became negative. And started negative, became positive. So the B and the C. For you to calculate the odds ratio, it is C divided by B. For you to calculate the odds ratio, it is C divided by B. That is the odds ratio. For you to calculate the chi square, it is B minus C squared divided by B plus C. I repeat, B minus C squared divided by B plus C. This formula is only valid if B plus C is larger than 25. Okay, so here you have the B and C. In our scenario just now, B plus C is larger than 25. Why? B and C is 22 plus 8 become 30. So it is larger than 25. So you can use this formula. So 22 minus 8 squared. So you got 16. Uh, sorry, you got 14. You square it. Then you divide by 30. So 14 you square it, divide by 40, you end up the value of 6.533. B over C over B, the odds ratio is 22 over 8. So you end up with a value of 22.75. So it, there is a positive change after the intervention. Okay. Degree of freedom, no problem. It's always one. So you got the value of 6.53. So 6.53 is between 5.02 and 6.63. Therefore, the p-value is smaller than 0. Okay. The p-value is smaller than 0. 0.025, but it is larger than 0. 0.01. Okay, p-value is smaller than 0 0.025, but it is larger than 0 0.01. Okay. So, there is a significant change in the attitudes after the intervention. Okay. However, if your B plus C is less than 25, then you have to use Edwards continuity correction. 
So adverse continuity correction, same like Yates correction, but instead of minus 0 0.5, you minus 1. You minus 1. Okay. So B minus C minus 1. Okay. So you end up with a, a different answer eh, for your exam. Alright. So this is an example on SPSS. So you see is now we use the same data set. We end up with a value of 0 0.016. So yes, it is smaller than 0 0.025, but it is larger than 0 0.01. Okay, and with that we stop uh, for I think that we can now it's eleven ten. We start at the eleven thirty. Then we will start with the non parametric and somehow we try hopefully we can try to finish the exercise later in the afternoon as soon as possible. Okay. So we start back at eleven thirty. You you all want to makan or whatever, you go ahead and makan. Any question? Uh, okay. Anas, uh, the last remark was about Anas and Durian. Uh, okay. So, 11.30, okay? I will stop this session. I will stop the recording so that we can uh, save this file. Okay, stop recording. Stop recording. So, Eleven thirty.